it's Elizabeth from Elpis Astrology at elpisastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. And now I'm going to move on to the final total eclipse in Sagittarius, which is a new moon uh, in Sagittarius. A new moon, as a reminder, put the sun and the moon together. So both these energy energies of the luminaries are working closely together in Sagittarius to help you put in place something new. So this could be a turning point month for you, especially Sagittarians, um, and secondly, uh, and Sagittarians Ascendant, and then secondly, of course, Geminis and Gemini Ascendants. So this new moon on the 3rd of December 2021 is at 12 degrees Sagittarius, 22 minutes, at 11.44 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And this is a Friday. So I would say, um, knowing this in advance, it's a new moon, a new start. Why not celebrate something? Maybe have a, a real fun event planned for yourself this weekend or even on the Friday that it actually occurs. So this emphasizes the Sagittarius part um, of the sky. And so we spoke earlier about the uh, total eclipse on the 26th of May and what word might, you know, reveal itself to us to help us understand and because both the luminaries are both in Sagittarius it's Sagittarius so this is revelation of the truth and in, a, in all its glory so I would say that whatever is has accumulated over the summer and the autumn ending here in December know that whatever new start or starts have started to reveal themselves this is where you're supposed to be going. And everything's not going to be clear to begin with. Certainly if this affects your chart directly, uh, say 12 degrees Sag or 12 degrees um, Gemini, you've still got um, an orb period of about six months where this can operate. So some of the, the dots may be in place, but the connections to the dots may not be. So if you've had new people, new places, um, even maybe new jobs come in place or into focus. Know that all those will be connecting up over the next six months from December 2021. When we look at the birthdays for this total new moon eclipse, um, when we look at the exact birthdays for December and Sagittarians, we're looking at the 2nd, 3rd and 4th of December, but in terms of a wide or for birthdays, we're looking really at the 1st to the 10th of December. Um, and I'm on the 10th of December, so <laughs> I'm going to include myself in there. When we look at Ascendants, Sagittarian Ascendants, we're looking generally from the 8 degree point to the 18 degree point of Sagittarius. And then for Geminis, 11th, 12th and 13th uh, degree of Gemini, which really boils down to the 2nd to the 6th of June. Or, of course, we're looking at Ascendants in Gemini, 11, 12, and 13 degrees of Gemini. So really this now brings us to being optimistic to take risks for our future. It may also be announcements. It could be a time, too, because Sagittarius does rule uh, teachers or preachers, that a teacher or preacher comes into prominence at this time maybe even a guru of some sort. And I'm not thinking specifically of a, a guru that's associated, say, with spiritual stuff, but it could be. Um, and it could also be a culmination, too, where we, as individuals, especially some, maybe some Sagittarians, decide to get on that path of the teacher or a guru at this time, individually. It's certainly a new start for Sagittarians. So for those Sagittarians that have been feeling a little bit down and you're watching this, say, um, May, June, July time, know that they are very bright and very optimistic and inspiring times ahead for you. And uh, to know that those will uh, evolve for you. And certainly December, mark December as an important month, uh, December 2021, probably for your life certainly for the next 20 years or so before these eclipses return again in similar degree points. And don't forget, we also have Jupiter going back 
into Pisces, now it'll only go into Pisces from literally the 31st of December 2021 till June 2022, so you've got a six month period. I expect for a lot of people who are directly affected by this final new moon, total eclipse in Sagittarius, uh, that even though it's forming a square to the, the Pisces Jupiter next year, it's not going to matter. It just means that you're going to have to adjust in the first half of 2022 and think outside the box, but that you could have dreams come true um, and enormous inspiration and optimism next year once that Jupiter in Pisces is linked up with your sign. And I'll obviously continue to talk about that Jupiter in Pisces over the next few months. Certainly uh, I'll be spending a lot more time of it uh, every month that it exists throughout 2022. But I have done a video specifically on this, I'm going to put the link below, of Jupiter in Pisces um, to look at at your pleasure. So I'm going to go on next now into the sun signs or the ascendant signs. Pick what you want. I would say you should read for your ascendant first. The reason for that is, is because your ascendant, um, which is what tells you what sign is rising in the east when you were born, divides up the houses in your chart, your personal chart. And the houses represent the areas of your life. So this gives you the area of your life when you read for ascendant. But equally important, of course, is your sun sign. So you want to read for your sun sign to kind of get a little more detail to what else might be happening in your life. Okay, leave me comments. We can always discuss this back and forth. So we'll start off with Sagittarius because Sagittarius, you're probably the most prominent feature because uh, the moons in both cases are in Sagittarius. So this is your first house. So Sagittarius, this is you making a whole new start in your life and certainly starting a whole new 20-year 20 cycle, 20 cycle in your life. You can expect every aspect of your life to change. So this could be uh, you moving. This could be you literally changing your appearance up in every possible way and how you present yourself to the world. Um, it could be partners change for you, uh, either leaving a partnership or it could be you getting married or forming some serious uh, relationship. And it could be business partnerships too, right? Not just marriage. Um, now the full moon, which was the first one that we spoke about uh, in the end of May, could have had you making some changes uh, with regards to your partnerships. This could be business partnerships and or marriage partnerships of significance. It can also be your clients. So it could be that if in your job you have clients that um, you saw some of the client base have big changes where maybe some of your clients left and new ones uh, come in. Um, but a change up, maybe you decided to do this or that the clients did this for you. And that was at the, the main one. But then of course there's this new ushering in of uh, new starts for you in December. So when we look at Capricorn, Capricorn, um, these two eclipses are mainly in your 12th house. And the 12th house is hidden things. Uh, it's uh, a place where secrets can come out. Um, it's sometimes viewed as um, the house of our self undoing. It's certainly meant to be a very spiritual time where you delve into your inner world. It can be something though as simple as you need rest and that that's what you get or are able to take at this time instead of working so hard. It could be as something as simple as that. Um, but you could decide to take up some metaphysical uh, types of uh, studies, um, anything from feng shui to shamanism to even yoga, where you know, you're working on your body inside and out and getting in a meditative state. It certainly is a time when I would say that you should you know, get out into nature as much as you can and um, commune with anything that allows you to, you know, expand your inner world um, without interference from, say, other people. So this could involve you literally just going for a walk in the forest, a walk by the sea, um, taking your dog for a walk. That's very meditative too. Or you could literally take up some kind of meditation. Um, but this is not a time of action. This is a time of more self-reflection, 
um, where some maybe some things will come to light that have been hidden for some time that uh, are really necessary for you to be able to understand many things going on um, that maybe didn't make sense before. Now, um, if we look at this full moon eclipse uh, at the end of May, we also have the sun in the sixth house. And the sixth house is our day-to-day -day habits, which usually is our day-to-day -day job. Yet it's also the house of health too. So it could be that at the end of May, some kind of health crisis comes up. And maybe it's not something that's um, you know, disastrous, but there's some little warning signal. And I would say if something like a warning signal does come up regarding your health, to please take care of it and um, get it checked out as, as soon as you can. But it could also be that some, maybe you ended some day-to-day -day job or the, the way you did your day-to-day -day job changes. That could happen too at the end of May, where then in December, a whole new um, way of doing things day-to-day, -day, including your job, may open up for you. Um, but the 12th house, like I said, is really rest and spirituality. So it could be that maybe you decide to bring in a, a huge helping of spirituality into your life and you take up a really serious yoga practice or meditative practice uh, in December. Good luck Capricorn. Next we have Aquarius and Aquarius is your 11th house of friends, groups and hopes and wishes. Um, and then we look at the full moon eclipse at the end of May that's where the fifth house is involved. So it could be, I mean, the fifth house really does describe a lot of things in your life. It can be children, children somehow come into focus at the end of May. Maybe literally a new child is in your life. It could be a new love. This is the house of new love. It's also creative projects. Um, but it is at its core being your authentic self. So maybe something came up in your life that reflected something back to you saying you're not being your authentic self and you start looking at over these next six months your friends and the groups that you belong to even your hopes and wishes and you decide to change some of these things up and you may change them up a lot especially when it say comes to friends or groups that maybe just don't represent your authentic self maybe you're being someone that you're really not um, that you're falling in with a group that doesn't really resonate with you inside and some changes are made there. It can also be um, maybe a new love comes into your life that was a, uh, a friend that you maybe met as a friend or in a group um, that it comes to light now at the end of May that they mean more to you than just a friend and an actual romance um, ensues. And so this would be a new beginning for you with regards to that friend. Good luck to you Aquarius. For Pisces, it is your 10th house that is mainly a focus, and this is your career house. So I would say this is a, a big time for you to review your career and your career goals. Um, you may decide to change your career completely. Your career may somehow come to light and fade away into the background, and something new is presented to you over the next six months, where you realize that you maybe want to work more from home. Um, the fourth house is going to be highlighted at the end of May and of course this is your home. So it could be that something happened in the home at the end of May that you had to make some decisions with regards to your career. So this would go all sorts of ways. Maybe you decided to sell your home because your career is taking you to now a completely different geography, different city, different country even, especially with Sagittarius. This could be overseas. Maybe you take up a job overseas and you have to sell your home. But it could equally be that you started working from home, that's the fourth house, and at the end of May you said, I really want to stay working from home. And then you work over the next six months where your career, um, you don't go into a traditional setting, that you actually operate from your home more. Or, <laughs> um, I guess you could be forced to go back into a traditional setting after this whole pandemic has tied, died down and you're not working so much at home anymore. So it could be something as simple as that. That's a big change in your career as well as your home, but the focus is going to be on what happens in your home, what ends there for you. 
For Aries, it is your ninth house. And the ninth house is actually ruled by Sagittarius. And so this is foreign people, foreign things. It's publishing. It's going back to school to say you're going up back for a master's or a PhD. It's also at its core the highest levels of consciousness where you say, what am I going to be? What is my legacy here? So it's also that. So it could have you thinking about things like that. Now the third house is accentuated along with the ninth house at the end of May. And so this really is talking about communication. So it could be that you enter into a lot of communications with people and um, you decide to maybe change even where you live because it's your neighborhood as well. Your siblings could come more into focus as well for some reason uh, with the third house accented at the end of May. Um, but certainly by going through these next few months uh, in summer and autumn leading up to December, your ninth house will be more in focus for a new start. And as I mentioned, this is foreign people, foreign things. Um, I see this more as you either having to work with foreign people or interact with foreign people or you decide to move overseas and um, that becomes your new beginning for you. But you could equally, depending what uh, is up for you in your life, go back to school. And this is you, maybe the third house, all the communications that you have to go through to apply uh, into a university setting. And then once the new start happens uh, in December, you're off into this new university setting and uh, blossoming, maybe even in a foreign land. So here we've got next is Taurus. And Taurus, it's your eighth house that's mainly in focus with these eclipses, with the second house coming in uh, at the end of May, where the sun is. So this has a focus on your finances and it, it may have you um, losing one stream of income, that's your second house, at the end of May, or you just deciding you don't want to have that job anymore. And instead you decide to maybe take an early retirement or uh, access your investment funds or your 401k or your joint savings or even apply for a loan at this time too. So that's what's up for you. Now, you know, Taurus, that you've also got Uranus. So depending um, what Uranus is interacting with in your chart uh, will also play into these eclipses. So uh, feel free to leave me some comments about that, those Taurians, and maybe we can figure something out for you. But it could just be a major change with regards to your income stream as well as your investments. So. Uh, at the very least, you're going to be having a very hard look at your investments and perhaps investing more or, or even taking some risks. Uh, Sagittarius is also about taking risks too and taking risks with regards to your money and investing maybe in some portfolio. Good luck, Taurus. So on this, for the seventh house, we have Gemini. And Gemini, this is partnerships of all sorts. And then, of course, your first house is accentuated by the full moon. So something's going to be coming to light at the, towards the end of May um, regarding you, where maybe you're going to be making some big change internally, externally. It could be all those things, every aspect of your life you could be reviewing. Um, and some aspects may be leaving your life. And then, as you go through the summer months and autumn months, you reflect on you know, what kind of partner you may want. You may start meeting partners. Uh, that are of interest to you. Um, you could meet the partner as well and this could culminate say at the beginning of December 2021 for you. But it can also be business partnerships as well. So it may be that uh, you're going back and forth with communications and discovering uh, what partners you could potentially work with um, over the summer and autumn and then deciding in uh, the beginning of December uh, to actually work with a number of people. Uh, that really suit you. It could also be you deciding to get married for some Geminis. It could be an engagement or it could be that you just meet the love of your life and that it culminates in a new beginning for you in December 2021. Good luck, Gemini. For Cancer, uh, we've got the axis of your sixth house and your twelfth house with an emphasis on the sixth house. So this is your health. 
So any kind of health things that come up, um, you're going to get a solution to early December. So know that for those cancers that do have health problems, at the end of May identified, going through, jumping through the hoops, uh, discovering new ways to heal yourself, working with uh, physicians and alternative medicine may all be up for you in the summer months and autumn months, culminating in you making maybe some new discovery or some new discovery aiding you with regards to your health. But this is also the house of um, two things. Um, in ancient times it was really uh, viewed as a house of, I guess, indentured servants. So this would be a time period of this eclipse where maybe you were car carrying some kind of burden for many, many years. That was never really yours, but you were saddled with it. This whole eclipse period from the end of May to the beginning of December could herald a time when you let go or are able to easily let go of that burden and you could start anew at the beginning of December. But it could be you just changing your job, leaving a job maybe, um, deciding to um, that maybe this job is just not suiting you internally and that it's, it's not feeding you internally and that you decide to make the changes yourself. And it culminates in a new job, December 2021. Good luck, Cancer. So Leo, Leo, we've got your fifth house accented mainly, but your 11th as well for the end of May. So this could have you um, have a focus on a number of things. The focus could be on maybe a child, uh, perhaps somebody gets pregnant um, at the end of May, culminating um, with an obvious new beginning uh, in December time, 2021. Um, it can also be uh, with the 11th house here that groups and friends play into some kind of romance for you or even some kind of um, artistic endeavor. Um, I'm thinking that maybe overall this could be a time period for Leos not only to fall in love with somebody, have a new love in their life, but also to more easily express who they are. At its core, that whole fifth house is asking you to be your authentic self. But usually it's tied in with artistic things as well, so it could be a great time for producing pieces of art. Um, or any kind of artistic endeavor, uh, but there's a big emphasis on that. And that um, maybe this ties in with some of your hopes and wishes, and th that hope and wish comes true, or gradually comes true, over the summer and autumn, culminating in this December time period where you actually have something concrete to produce. Good luck, Leo. So for Virgo, the axis for you is mainly your fourth house of home, but also your tenth house career. So this to me says there's a little bit of a conflict or challenge with regards to the career. Maybe you're having to spend too much time um, at work and not enough time at home and it's causing some havoc at home. Or the opposite, where you're having to do a lot of stuff at home that's interfering with your career. But both of these things are going to be highlighted with emphasis on your home. So it could be to here um, that you decide that you can more easily work from home and that that's what you do. You make a whole new start at the beginning of December to work from home or even um, you know become a consultant. Don't work for a firm that you become a consultant and that ensues you working at home. Uh, it could be also that you let a job go or a job goes from you at the end of May and you're finding yourself working at home more, maybe on contracts, that type of thing. That can happen as well. Um, just on a very surface level, this could have you having a big focus on your home where maybe you, at the end of May, let go of a home, sell a home, and then at the beginning of December, you move into a new home. So all those things could be up for you too. The mother is always associated with the fourth house as well, and because it's a big focus in the fourth house, perhaps your mother or your habits even are going to come into focus where you take and turn a new page with both those things. For Libra, it's your third house and your ninth house. The third house is your neighborhood. So it could be that there's a lot more activity in your, in your neighborhood. Maybe there's going to be new things added to your neighborhood over the summer and autumn that culminate in some kind of new beginning in your neighborhood. It's your siblings. Maybe there's a new start due uh, at the beginning of December for you in this area. 
where um, the ninth house is accentuated at the end of May, and the ninth house could be, you know, foreign people, foreign things. So perhaps you've been living overseas or in a foreign land, and that comes to an end now. That's the ninth house. And you move back into your old neighborhood, maybe even where your siblings are, and start a whole new chapter with them. That kind of came in as a big intuition for me for you, Libra. Um, but it also involves uh, writing and publishing. So it could be that there's a big emphasis around some kind of writing project, whether it's a small one or a large one, um, that you publish something at the end of May. And then this uh, emphasis on the third house at the beginning of December has you putting a lot of effort into the sales and commerce of that uh, publication that you had. Good luck, Libra. So we end up here with Scorpio. And Scorpio, don't forget, you've got the south nodes of the moon going into your sign uh, at the beginning of January 2022. And the north nodes will be in your opposite sign of Taurus, so big destiny changes up for you next year. So they will be playing into the fallout of these eclipses. And these eclipses fall in your second and eighth house, and again, these are money houses. But the emphasis for you is going to be on making money. So it could be that you'll take another job, that's possible here. It could also mean that you decide to let a job go and start a new job. But with the 8th house being emphasized also at the end of May, it could be that um, a number of things, a loan comes due, and you have to figure out a way to get that paid, and that means you've got to take another job, or somehow find another source of income. 8th house is also a time uh, or a thing that you may do is decide to put more money into your investments and long-term savings, and that may require you to take another job or to change your job so that you earn more money so that you can save more money. That may come into view too. But the 8th house is also about our psychological selves. So at the end of May, um, there may be something that happens to you that really affects you internally uh, and psychologically. Maybe you're going through some psychotherapy and you're getting a lot of epiphanies and waking up to things. Maybe the value of yourself, because the second house is also value of self. And that you start sitting up straighter and sh showing people that you want to be valued differently and putting up boundaries maybe even and insisting that you're being treated in a certain way. And this may also involve you asking for a raise. That could happen too. But this other source of income could also be like passive income too. That could be the eighth house as well where passive income comes in to supplement your um, you know, ongoing day-to-day uh, -day income that you have. So good luck with that, Scorpio. All right, that wraps up the two eclipses. Those are, again, total eclipses in Sagittarius. The one on the 26th of May uh, is going to be a total eclipse uh, that um, is in Sagittarius, and it's a full moon. Generally speaking, it's endings, but as I said before, eclipses are wild cards. So it could be endings, it could be beginnings, it could be both. Um, but let's just say there's going to be a big focus and a big light put on something at the end of May for you to pay attention to with the summer and autumn months with you processing through that culminating at the beginning of December for a new start wherever that Sagittarian new moon falls in your chart. I'm sending lots of love to everybody. Best of luck. You're going to see me again of course for the July uh, video which I always look forward to. As I said I love to do people's charts so please reach out to me. All my contact info is below. I'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, any comments that you have are always welcome. Bye for now. Until